Trayvon Martin did not shoot and kill anybody. What George told us was the truth. There are a number of different interpretations of what happened that night. They've killed my son, and now they're trying to kill his reputation. He's um, a nice guy in a horrible situation. Our son is your son. Yes. I want you guys to stand up for justice. George was viciously blindsided by a nose-breaking attack. Trayvon Martin did not have a gun. George has never said that Trayvon touched the gun. I pledge I will not let my son die in vain. All right, joining the conversation now, attorney David Benkowski. David, thank you so much for being uh, with us. I know that you've been in other high-profile trials, such as Jody Arias, and uh, uh, both camps were pretty quiet in, in a lot of these, but with this one, it's just like a free-for-all. How do you think that's going to affect this trial? I think it's a foolish mistake for all these parties to be talking so publicly. So many things can go wrong. Something you can say can be used against you. You can tip off the other side on the strategy. You can make a mistake, and you know something that questions your credibility. But most importantly, you might offend the judge. Uh, there's a reason the judge has the fancy robe and the big high bench, and that's because mm -hmm. the judge is supposed to be in charge. And judges do not take kindly to this time, this type of extracurricular activity outside of the courtroom. You know, we've been waiting for this decision, this ruling about the voice experts and if this voice analysis will be uh, admitted to the trial. And it seems to be taking a long time. Mm -hmm. They've been actually arguing over this for months. What could be taking so long? Well, I don't worry about so much about it taking so long because think of it as a, a, a picture. And each one of those pieces of evidence is a key piece to that puzzle. And so really, a, a man's life hangs in the balance here. And I think they want to make sure they get it right. And I think they really want to you know, study it and think about it. And because the more of those pieces of the puzzle that don't get in there, the more difficult it's going to be for either side to try and demonstrate their picture. So I don't think the delays are a problem. I think it's important to get it right. And I think it's a way of this, you know, this judge kind of taking control of these things and making sure that that, uh, you know, she's in charge. Okay, Ben Crump is, is the family attorney, Trayvon Martin's family attorney, but he has no presence really at the trial itself. Yet he's had such a presence outside with the media, sitting and standing next to Trayvon Martin's parents as they address the media and, and giving so much, so many statements himself. Um, Janet, how is he going to play into this thing? I mean, is he going to be, I, I think I remember hearing he may be called as a witness. Well, you know, it's interesting because the judge denied the motion to depose him. And, you know, he said, I'm an attorney, it's attorney-client privilege. And that trial judge denied it. It just this week, I think on Monday, the District Court of Appeals in Florida, where I practice, said, no, judge, you got that wrong. They're going to get to depose him because he has exactly what David said. He's inserted himself into this as a witness now, not just as an attorney, and he's not a party to this. You know, when I'm in a deposition and the civil attorney wants to swoop in and I'm the defense attorney and I say, no, the state of Florida is the presence at this table. You're not. You have to sit there and be silent. Well, he didn't do that. And now he's made himself into a witness. Mm -hmm. Deneen, has, has Ben Crump made any impact on you? Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I want to go back to um, how important it is for them to have a voice. If it were not for media coverage of this, we would have not known that Trayvon Martin was killed. His parents wouldn't have known what happened. George Zimmerman would not have been arrested. It's extremely important for them to go out there and continue to do what they're doing to put Stan Your Ground on trial, mm -hmm. to be able to bring attention to what happened to this 17-year-old boy who was walking down the street minding his business with Skittles and tea in his pocket. We need to make sure that that stays the focus. David, what's your, what's your final thought on that? Getting the story out there uh, may be good in one regard, but you have to remember there's a difference between getting the story out there and drawing attention versus talking about particulars or talking about strategy or making comments that could be used. Uh, so really, it's a fine line. It's a risky line in this new age of 24-7 coverage. Uh, it's kind of different from it was in the past, and, and I think the old way was the right way. I think if you're an attorney, you're advising everybody to just keep your mouth shut and stay out of it because the most important thing is winning at trial, not trying to win the uh, issue of public opinion. All righty. David Bentkowski, thank you so much. Boy, and it's just so, it's so unique the way he's saying it. You tell everybody to keep your mouth shut, but everybody's talking. But the attorneys are talking, so it, it is very different. Hey, listen, stay tuned uh, to HLN for everything you need to know about the George Zimmerman trial, obviously. We are watching it right now and monitoring as soon as the judge makes a ruling. You